I try to come up here and like not embarrass myself on the first time because there's so, this is in my way. There's so many people that don't know me, but it's fine. Thank you. Thank you for that. Thank you for that. So 2020, 2020 vision, new year, new me, new goals, new resolutions, right? Who has one? Word of the year, vision board. Guys, it's only 21 days in. How many of you that did not raise your hand had one on January 1st? Okay, I think you did. I think you did. So goals, this is the time of year, right? January is when we do this. We decide we want to make goals. And goals and resolutions are basically just commitments to change. So if you did have one and you didn't raise your hand because you feel like you already gave up, it is not too late. Let me go ahead and tell you that right now, okay? Some changes are easy. You change your clothes every day, I hope. You change your hair, that's easy enough to do. You change a channel, unless you're watching Netflix. And that's actually really hard to change the channel because it just like auto rolls into that next thing. Next thing you know, it's been three hours or like three seasons later, right? Okay, so take that one off the easy list maybe. It's easy to look back at our childhoods and go, okay, well, I'm going to change that. I'm not going to do that like my parents did. That's an easy change to make. And sometimes we just get so sick and tired of our own selves that we do put the time and effort to things that matter, and then those changes can be easy to make as well. You know, the self-help industry wants to convince us that change is easy. Do you know that the self-help industry is worth over $10 billion and growing? Okay, and I mean, I am play a part of that. Because when you want a change, you want a quick answer, right? You're like, hurry up, tell me what I need to know. What do I need to do? Give it to me straight, right? And they'll, they'll tell you, recognize the behaviors, name your patterns, set small achievable goals, and they make it sound so easy. But we know, and the truth is, that change is hard. Have you ever tried to change yourself physically, like change your physical structure, maybe to lose weight or to gain muscle? That is not easy, that is hard, and it takes effort and it takes time. Have you ever tried to change your perspective? Maybe something that you have believed your whole entire life and then something happens and you have to take a look at the possibility that maybe you've been wrong about that and you have to change what you've always thought was true. You wanna know what's easy? Not trying, right? Not taking the risk to change something is easier than taking the risk, trying to change and then realizing that you failed. Not asking the question, am I capable, can I do this, is a whole lot easier than asking the question and then getting an answer that you didn't want or sitting around and going, okay, well, where is this answer, right? You probably heard people say, oh, people don't like change, right? People don't like change. I don't think that's true. I don't think it's that we have a dislike of change. I think it's that we're afraid of it, which makes sense. Okay, change is essentially stepping into the unknown. And we have a fear of the unknown because guess what, it's unknown. We don't know what it is, right? What if we don't like who we become? What if who we think we wanna be or what we think we want isn't actually at all what we want once we get there and realize that we were wrong? What if we get to the answer or the thing that we think is gonna be the answer and we're still unhappy? or we're still unsatisfied. That's a scary thing to walk toward. Some of us are afraid of change because you've tried it and you're like, yeah, I've gotten worse. I'm capable of change, but I don't like who I am anymore. Can I go backwards? Once the change is in motion, can I reverse it and go back to who I was? And some of us don't like change because we're afraid it's actually going to work. We have a fear of being successful. And we get there and we're like, oh, this is good. I did it. This is hard. This is taking a lot more effort than I thought it was going to. And then we're afraid that we're not going to be able to handle the upkeep. So I've been on a self-awareness journey for the last couple years. And I can tell you what I was afraid of was losing myself. See, when change reaches the fundamental core parts of who you are, it feels like you're losing your identity. I will never forget when a very good friend of mine helping me along this journey said, you take up all of the air in the room. 
And essentially what he was saying was I suffocate people <laughs> that are in my presence. Because if you don't know me, I have a very loud personality and a loud everything. Like I'm just loud and it's true and I take up a lot of room. But what I heard was, you're too much and your personality is wrong and that I needed to change who I am. Spoiler alert, he was right. And it is actually possible to turn down the volume of your personality without completely changing who you are. He's smarter than me and it's probably why he is recognized by the wards. Thank you for that. <laughs> See, I feared the risk of a domino effect. If I change this part of me and all of a sudden I'm quiet, all of a sudden I'm not loud and I'm not that extra girl and I'm not the one that's too much, who am I even gonna be? We're afraid that if we make a change, even when we have the desire for a change, that if it's tied to our identity, we won't know who we are when we come out on the other side. So I wanna tell you that change doesn't have to be scary. And just kind of share with you a few things that I've learned now that I'm a change expert of two years. <laughs> so we all know the classic metaphor for change, right? Ah, the butterfly. You go from this cute little worm to a butterfly. Spread your wings, girl, you've arrived. You're a butterfly, this is your moment. The first thing I have to tell you about change is that you are not a dang butterfly, okay? What you actually are is an axolotl. This disgusting little rat lizard thing? That's what you are. Show them the next. What is that? That's you, my friends. Welcome to your new self-portrait. Okay, so the thing about a butterfly is that it changes one time. There's a before and an after. It's this or it's that, and that's it. The thing about axolotls, that's what that ugly little thing is called, is that it's regenerative. It is constantly changing. So those suckers can lose a limb and they will actually grow back. That can lose half of its brain and it will grow back, not just in brain matter, but in functionality and keep on working. God is really funny and these things are proof because God was like, I'm gonna take one of the ugliest things that I've ever created and I'm gonna give you guys the power to just keep on getting better and better. Keep on getting better, just keep trying little guys. See, they're resilient. And when they go through pain and they get hurt, they refuse to stay like that. Pay attention to what I said. When they get hurt, when they lose a leg, they don't just pick it up and put it back on. They regrow their leg. They evolve into something new. They grow into something that they were not before. They get better. See, I think some of us are frustrated with change because we're trying to go back to who we were. We're trying to go back to a previous version in a previous life where we thought we were happier or we had it more together or we were more successful or fill in the blank, but that's not how change works. God is not in the business of taking our outgrown, broken pieces and reattaching them to us to carry around for the rest of our lives. Think about it. If that was the case... When my daughter's teeth fell out, I would pick them up and I would shove them back in her mouth, okay? When my daughters fell down, which is every day at our house, right? Yep, all the time. I would like find their skin in the sidewalk, slap it back on there. If your moms take care of you like this, let's talk afterwards, okay? That's not how it's supposed to work. So some of you are trying to do that. You're trying to go back, take lost things, and put them back on. You think you're going back to who you were, but you can't because you've grown past that. All you're doing is walking around collecting dead things and carrying them around, and it is time to put them down and let them go. It hurts to lose a piece of yourself. It hurts when a tooth falls off. It hurts to lose part of your skin. It hurts when you lose part of your heart but it is necessary for growth. The old has to die before the new can grow again. See, the other thing that happens when my daughters skin their knees is that they get a scar. 
And that scar is new skin. It's regenerated skin that is not only a reminder of where they've been and what happened, but it is new growth that is stronger and thicker than what was there before. The second thing you need to know about change is that it happens when you're not prepared for it. We learned in school, butterflies know when change is coming, right? The very hungry caterpillar, he eats all the things. That caterpillar eats like cake and lollipops and all the fruit. And then he gets into his protective little shell and he takes a nap. And then at the right time, he emerges into the butterfly. Well, I don't know about you, but no boyfriend of mine, when he was gonna break up with me, which by the way, was every boyfriend I ever had, None of them came to me with a timeline. I said, here's a stuffed crust pizza and some Ben and Jerry's. I want you, the whole, it's all for you. Go put on those sexy sweatpants, the ones that have all the holes in them that you never wash. Get real comfy on the couch and you just chill, boo, you just take your time here. And after a certain amount of time, I'm gonna come tell you that I don't love you anymore. That was not my experience. See, no one told me when I was in high school that in a matter of months, my dad would lose his job, my grandmother would pass away, and I would have to move to a new state. All things that changed everything I know about my life. When I got to that new state and new high school, none of the girls on my cheerleading squad, my new community, told me, hey, by the way, we're going to treat you worse for the next two years than you've ever been treated in your entire life. Change happens when you're not expecting it. And unfortunately, sometimes change happens to you and there's nothing you can do to control it. And I need you to understand that the pain of your change is not a punishment. When change happens to you, it is not because you are not good enough. It is not because you are not strong enough. It is not because you are not prepared enough or because you should have been a different person or fill in the blank, whatever the reason is floating around in your head while you're trying to go back to being someone else. He still would have left. She still would have died. The hard and hurtful thing would have happened even if you'd known it was coming even if you'd been a different person, even if you'd reacted differently, even if you'd picked up that phone, it still would have happened even if. See, God wants to take those unexpected losses when life chops off a limb and use them to restore and transform us. The third thing I need you to know about change is that it's personal. I really wanted to find a story that I could tell you to illustrate change in my life and Dio and Brian, such a great job. But for me, I felt like I was grasping at things. I was trying to just find one of those butterfly moments. But sometimes no matter how good your story is, you can't convince other people that you've changed. And trust me, I've tried. I am an unordained female leading a church campus. I have tried to prove myself to so many people in so many ways that I am actually capable of doing this job. Because I know that the truth is that I am not what people expect. And for a lot of people, that also means I am not good enough to do this role. Uh, well, you're, you're not a pastor, so just I would just stick with director. You're just a director. Oh, you baptize people? That doesn't count though, right? <sighs> Come on, man. No one is ever gonna take her seriously. Have you seen her Instagram stories? I have to constantly remind myself that it's not my job to convince other people that I have changed. I have to find my identity in Jesus and make sure that my transformation is about becoming like him. And people who knew me before, people who know that I'm not perfect, they can't accept how I've changed, so they can't accept me for who I am now. And when I forget that, when I forget that their opinions are not the ones that matter, it does not matter how big the stage is or how bright the lights are or how loud the microphone is. When you look out and you see people that you know don't believe in you, the critics are the only people in the room. And I have to release it to God over and over again because he says that I am worthy of being used 
because he has made me new. God says, I am changed, and I am not the person that I was two years ago, 10 years ago. I wasn't, I'm not the person I was last week. And as long as he knows I'm changed, then it does not matter if anyone else sees it. See, being a butterfly would be easier because it's that one and done, right? People would know when you've changed because caterpillar, butterfly. And then they would know what to expect. They could put expectations on you, right? They would know when the moment has happened, and then we could all just move along with our lives. Oh, this is who you are now. Okay, good. Now I know. Because your, your, your change shakes things up, and your change shakes people up. And sometimes people aren't ready for change. They're not ready for your change. And all they know how to do is to treat you like the person that you were before. This often looks like being put in a box, or ha being in a relationship with someone who wants you to just keep playing the role that you've always played because it makes them more comfortable in your relationship. It could be your family. Maybe you have decided to start communicating and setting healthy boundaries and standing up for yourself. And so your family is now gonna tell you that you're selfish and you clearly don't care about anybody else. Maybe it's your friends. You're not going out and doing the things that you used to do because you've recognized that they're destructive for your life. So instead of going out with them, they still call you, but it's to tell you that you're, you're a hypocrite and you're judging them for doing the things that you used to do, but now you're too good. See, it's easier for other people when we live according to their expectations. And the more you change, the more people will try to treat you like who they think you are. If I haven't completely scared you away from change yet, <laughs> let me come at you with maybe a solution. And I know it sounds backwards, but the answer to change not being scary is to know your constant, to know your foundation, and to know who you really are. Malachi 3.6 says, I am the Lord. I do not change. Hebrews 13.8. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. That is your foundation. That is who you are. Because you are a reflection of the one who does not change. So whether you have changed, you want to change, or you're in the middle of change happening to you, the constant in you is good and beautiful and true because you were created in the image of an unchanging God. And it actually matters that he is unchanging. It matters that God is not able to change because it means that he cannot fail to keep his promises to forgive us. It means he cannot get to a place where he goes, Kristen, enough. You have had so many chances. You keep telling me you're gonna change. You keep telling me you're, you're gonna do this. And you go back to it again and again and again. He's not gonna do that because he can't. Our hope in him is a stability that we can count on in the midst of every change. 1 John 3, 2 says, Beloved, we are God's children right now. Already, it's good. However, it is not yet apparent what we will become, but we do know that when it is finally made visible, we will be just like him, for we will see him as he truly is. It is not yet apparent what we will become. You always have the potential to change. So there was this guy who was a thief, and at the end of his life, he was crucified, which is essentially the punishment of all punishments for basically being a terrible person and living a terrible life. And he just so happened to be hanging on a cross next to Jesus. And we don't know what happened, but something changed in his heart. And only moments after mocking Jesus, he looked at him and he said, will you remember me when you get to your kingdom? And Jesus didn't say, prove yourself. Show me how you've changed. This guy had never seen a Bible. He'd not been in church. He wasn't about to have the chance even to prove that he was new. He wasn't going to start serving on a volunteer team. He wasn't going to start writing tithe checks to support Jesus' mission. He was literally moments away from dying. There was nothing he could do. But he just asked for Jesus to know him. And that was all it took. And Jesus said, today, you'll be with me in paradise. 
Guys, that's still all it takes because that's who Jesus is. He does not say to us, turn into a butterfly, become your best self, and then come to me when you're presentable. He says, come to me, you ugly little rat lizard with missing limbs, (laughs) and I will make you whole again. And then when you mess up again, come again because you always have another chance to be made new. See, self-help books can tell us what to do, but they cannot give us the power to do it. And the same power that raised Jesus from the dead is available to you today. All you have to do is ask. And it's not easy. I'm not gonna say that it's easy. You're going to have to deal with a lot of stuff. And it's going to be a very personal thing, what it is that you have to deal with. It's going to take some self-reflection. Some of you already know what it is. Some of you right now are like, don't say the thing that I'm thinking, because you know what it is. Okay? Some of you are going to have to deal with an anger that you don't understand, and you don't know where it comes from or why you can't make it go away. Some of you are going to have to deal with depression, thoughts of hurting yourself, Some of you are going to have to deal with conceit, maybe thinking that you're better than you are, unforgiveness, bitterness. I don't know what it is for you. I'm not saying that's going to be easy, but it is simple. Believe that God is who he says he is and trust that he will grow you into who he made you to be. If you don't know how to trust God, I would really love for you to leave tonight having a little bit of that assurance. I would love to talk to you afterwards. There's also an ICU Talks prayer team that's gonna be available. I'm wrapping up. Y'all can go ahead and go to the back if you want. We would love to pray with you. We would love to talk to you, walk you through the next steps. It's not scary. It's basically only one step. Jesus is not gonna force his way in to change your life, but he's just there waiting for you to ask just like he was for the thief that day. My prayer is that you would be able to trust God to make you new. Because when you allow God to do something in you, something that you never thought would be possible before, you realize that you can become someone different than you have ever been.